I just see new people. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the special edition of uh, Cafe. Uh, the, the special edition of Cafe Gallery right here at Gallery Cabaret. Thank you all so much for giving out this event. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I see that the TV game just as it's about to happen. And I think I see more people I recognize just walking through that door. You're triple plus awesome. Um, I have done in the past book releases from Cyberwit that have released books of mine. Mo, two years ago was Shattering the Glass Zealing last year. A lot of post Roe v. Wade stuff that's in the first half of this book, Testament. But the newest book that has come out from them is titled The Universe is in Your Hands. The cool thing about this one is that it has poems literally from around the planet. It goes around the planet. It covers oceans, even. It covers Antarctica. It covers Alaska. And it's, there's a, and it's fun because you can even look through an index. Hey, I want a poem about, hey, Jupiter, because there's something about the beginning and end of the universe in this thing. And they have just come out, and they are available now. They all cost online 15 and 20 bucks, but I've got copies for 10 bucks. I'll lose money because I paid more, but I will give them to you for only $10 if anybody would like a copy in their hands right now, here, today. But, <laughs> I got a whistle for that one. But I would like to share with you before I hand it over to our usual open mic host here for poetry at the Gallery Cabaret, Wes Hine. I'm going to read with you one poem that represents Chicago. I personally personally love this poem because it's just me and I'm just a child that way. I really love it. Um, and I'm going to read it wherever I go here for this week while I'm still in town. But it is titled Big Brother. Or Big Shoulders. Big Shoulders. This was her home. This poet went to Carl Sandburg High. But her friend Brian lived further south. And one summer day, she sat in his car as he excitedly told her that he wanted to show her something. She didn't know where they were going. Her tension mounted as his anticipation grew, and as he was driving further south and what east than either of their high schools. And now, remember, this was back in the day when Tinley Park was not congested, and there were still abandoned blocks before this town just suddenly was all over under construction, and ugly buildings littered the landscape. Brian finally pulled over, told her to get out of the car, and they walked through the gravel until trees cleared at one small spot along the horizon. He stopped. Stop. Look over there. He said, pointing his fingers to this tiny space between the trees. This poet from Carl Sandburg High saw the skyline of downtown Chicago. <laughs> like a diamonds in the rough with these high rises. <laughs> this Chicago skyline was just south of where Carl Sandburg once lived. This poet smiled, stared a while and made the decision right then and there that this was her destination. This was where she was meant to be. She, she was not there yet, but this stormy, brawling city of big shoulders, this was her home. going to go around and do open mics and I'm going to butt in every once in a while just to read a poem or two before the feature at the end of the night because this ends at 8.30 so wherever Wes is or if he knows the first poet, I'm, I'm all ready to go.